leftists like Harry Belafonte, to name one, in attacking Donald Trump, saying he's a grave threat to democracy. What are they so afraid of with uh, Donald Trump is the question. What do they fear with Donald Trump? Well, they fear that the party is over, that the destruction of our borders, language, and culture, and disseminating pornography and violent films will be over under Trump. That's all. It's bad for business. WMAL, Bob, welcome to the Savage Nation. Fire away 30 seconds or less. What is it? I'd like to know what they fear about Cruz so much. Why do they fear him more than Trump? I mean, that, that blows my mind. I'm trying to make a decision. Wait, 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 wait <laughs> sir. Why does... Who, sir, I just said to you, Jane Fonda and the Hollywood elite are attacking Trump, not Cruz. So what, who, that's, who fears Cruz more? Why, and, and, you know, if, if Trump supports subsidies for corn... Or Bob, Bob, it, listen to me. If you can't hear me, and we're having this problem on my show every day, who hates Cruz more than Trump? The money doesn't... Robert, are you running the board properly? Because I can't do a radio show. If, are you, you know what we're getting is we're getting robotic callers every day. They're calling this show in particular because they know I'm the strongest voice in radio, the most original voice in radio, the least predictable voice in radio, the most independent voice in radio. They know that. They're calling with robotic scripts in their hand. He said, why did they attack Cruz more than Trump? Who? Who's attacking Cruz more than Trump? Tell me who. Tell me who. And it's a stupid topic. I mean, it's so boring, I can't talk about it. I'd rather talk about, I, I don't know, uh, Diane F Jane Fonda eating fish roe than that. I, it's stupid. Can we talk about something important like what is a liberal? What is a conservative? I had a great show yesterday. I slept well. I didn't even drink last night. I had nothing. I felt so good I didn't even need a vodka from, uh, from the end of the day. In fact, I went on a high alkaline diet for 10 minutes. No, I've done that. I wrote books on it years ago. It makes a big difference. My energy was super. Unbelievable. High alkaline. Great diet. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Yeah, black magic woman, right. Three minutes of heaven and 23 hours and 57 minutes of the other thing. Black magic woman. Does anyone understand what I just said? Robert's smiling. He's young enough to get that. That's all. It's a little trade-off. Three minutes of heaven and 23.57 on the other side of the ledger. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Robert's a young fellow who's engaged. He's still an idealist. And he should, he should, he should go forward and multiply and stuff like that. We need good children. Drudge is running a poll, who was your pick for president? And the last election, he was super accurate. These other, other polls are like fake. There's another guy who keeps running polls showing, like, John Kasich. You know, I mean, crazy. Where are they? Bought and sold. Let's see, view results. Trump, 46.55%. Uh, Celia Cruz, 28%. Rubio the Ice Cream Man, 7.5. What happened to Ron Paul? Rand Paul, I don't even know the difference. You know, the same people who attacked me, uh, like the Cruz bots, they were the Paul nuts a year ago. I used to get slammed by the Paul fanatics. They've shifted over to being Cruz fanatics. <clears throat> Sanders, 3%. Kasich, 1.9. Carson, 1.9. Christie, 1.5. Fiorina, 1.4. Bush won three. <laughs> Clinton won one, two, five. Oh, but this is on the Drudge Poll. Santorum, that's a, it's like a horse race, Point two six. Santorum and O'Malley in, in this case. Imagine a racetrack, and the winner has gone around the track twice, and they're coming to the finish line. It's like a two-lap race, right? These guys haven't even gone around once, and yet there are people who promote them. Trump's strongest primary performance in modern history. All right, I'm supporting him. I like what he says. I realize he doesn't give enough details. I get it. But let me tell you something about the average American. They don't even know what anyone's talking about. They have no idea whatsoever. How do you imagine the average voter? What's your image of an average voter? It's not you. You're tuned into politics. That's why you're listening to talk radio. You ain't listening half, you know, with half an ear. 
but you are listening to maybe glean this or that. You're doing something else, many, you know, many of you. But the average American doesn't even read or listen to anything. They don't know who anyone is. They get propaganda in the headlines of the newspapers, you know. So if you get a smear campaign running against a candidate in the newspapers a week before the election, they'll be, they'll be, um, excuse me, swayed. KSFO, San Fran, Cisco. I can hardly say the word anymore. Robert on KSFO. What's on your mind, Robert? Well, I wanted to make a comment. Uh, my uh, father-in-law is a retired uh, gunnery sergeant from the Marines and an active uh, police officer. The thing is, he's a big Cruz supporter, and he cannot for one second like Trump. I mean, I'm a Trump supporter, but we get, you know, we go at it because he's very, very conservative. I mean, when I mean conservative, I mean a very, he's Baptist, hardcore Christian. He can't let that go, and that's why he can't warm up to Cruz, uh, warm up to Trump. I remember what you said a couple of days ago on the radio about would you rather be right or would you rather be smart? You remember that? Yeah, I certainly do. It saved my... It saved my behind many a time since a, a, a lawyer taught me that 40 years ago. And this is the thing, Michael. Listen to this, okay? This is coming from someone. I want, I want you to hear me out. This is coming from someone uh, who's a convicted felon. Unfortunately, I got into trouble. And uh, ironically... Hey, I man, you don't have to apologize. Listen, you don't have to apologize to me. Okay, I understand. I hear a little bit of your background and your accent. Trust me, I have a very good ear. I was going to even say it to you. Where did you do time? What, what, what I wanted to tell you was, I mean... No, no, no one's hearing me again. I, there's something wrong with the board or something. Where'd you do your time? Corcoran? No, no, no. In uh, Estill, South Carolina. It was a federal prison camp. I was there with uh, Peter Madoff. <laughs> oh. All right. I don't want to go into your crimes. You paid your dues to society. You are out. What, what people don't know is many ex-felons who come out are very conservative. Isn't that true? That's very correct. And something that I wanted to bring up, sir, when in the prison system, something that you, you may have not, re I'm sure you've noticed, but a lot of people are concerned with Obama bringing in refugees from Islamic countries uh, to, you know, to destroy the country. What's already happened is when he did that release of federal prisoners, uh, when he, he reduced the sentencing guidelines, he let out a lot of Islamic converts that are in the system that I've seen, mainly african American who just do that as a show while in prison. When they leave, they either throw the Koran out or do things like that uh, act that like that Muslim in uh, Philadelphia did to the cop. He already mm. said he come out on the street, and people don't even look at it that way. He just let out a bunch of felons that are... Well, he needs, he needs more community organizers, and who better than active, active community organizers than uh, those who come out of prison? Exactly, 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 exactly. So I'm very curious now. I happen to watch a lot of these shows like Lock Up and this and that. What was your crime? Um, it was conspiracy to manufacture marijuana with intent to distribute. Well, today you'd be working for the Department of Health and Human Services. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way, the way the country has changed and the laws have been changed, you wouldn't even be an outlaw anymore. You'd be working for the federal government. Exactly. <laughs> but your life is ruined. I mean, your your life is ruined fundamentally as an ex felon, right? L let me tell you this, and, I, and I'm never going to let that see. That's that's the difference between somebody who who's a hard. Th this is what I take as a conservative. I'm, I'm I'm a felon, but I will never be put in a position where I'll let that ruin my life. I'm not going to go get a minimum wage job or complain about minimum wage. Ever since I got out of prison while on supervision, while on supervision, I still made a six figure income legally, legally. Well, I don't want to go there because I, I don't want to know what you did, frankly. Uh, you, look, you're obviously a very smart guy. I, you know, I was watching a show last night on lockup. Was this a different country? So we all know this is true, that the prisoners line up behind their race. The Hispanics are in one part of the thing, the whites in another, and the blacks in another. Is that still true? Um, that's very correct. Let me comment on that, actually. I was in a prison camp, so it's a little less political because most of the people there are white-collar criminals or drug offenders that are there 10 years or less. The, the real politics are when you go to the medium, to the higher security. But um, I was actually, it's the click thing with the whites, blacks, and Hispanics, that's still accurate. When I got there, they put me in a bunk with five, uh, five Caucasians. One of the guys I, was, I made really good friends with, he actually went to prison at the end of the Clinton administration. Um, you can look him up. He actually got in trouble for uh, KKK-related things, and he, uh, he did up almost 20 years. He got out a few years ago, but he did almost 20 years, and he was actually a, 
kind of a good guy, but I mean, what he did was not so good. But I mean, that, that's neither here nor there. That's another story. Okay, but you, wait, you are Hispanic, correct? I'm I'm Cuban American, first generation American from Cuban immigrants. Uh huh. Okay. All right, but then you'd say you're his. Would you identify as Hispanic or as Caucasian? Uh, well, as an Amer Hispanic, I guess I, I consider myself an American, but. Hispanic. I understand, but if you're in a prison and there are gangs and they're and they're and they're dividing people up by race, where would you go? Latin, Latin. Because okay, based on your looks, only on your looks. Kind of look, I kind of look white to, to tell you the truth, Michael. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it. Let, let's not go. Let's not go down that road. So, in a federal lockup, is it just as vicious as in other prison state jails like California has? Remarkably dangerous places like uh, Pelican Bay, Corcoran. Uh, the, but the federal prisons are much different, aren't they? I mean, I don't mean like Florence, Oklahoma, where they put the worst. The white collar places, they're not as vicious or they are? No, they're definitely not as vicious. They're, they're, I'm going to tell you now, it's just, a, it's just a summer camp. It's a way to lose weight and get yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't be getting the good lunches I, I have the assistant get me during the show every day in, in a jail. They make me lose weight. <laughs> but that's the way. All right. So and look, the main point of your call was really important. It's just there were like guys hanging out in a bar talking and having a beer. And, you know, that's the way you're shooting the breeze. People who know how to talk do this. People who don't know how to talk get nervous listening to us because they can't understand how two men can communicate so well and don't even know each other. Uh, but we both have the ability to do that. Your primary point was your father, right? Did you say your father? Father-in-law. Father-in-law. Ex-gunnery sergeant, hardcore, doesn't like Trump, a crew supporter, uh, blah, 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 and you don't know how to change his mind. Didn't you tell him that you, you like Cruz, you respect him except for one or two things, but in a general election, Trump is more electable against Hillary? Does he understand that? that that's what I tell him and my mother-in-law. I tell him, listen, you know, no, nothing wrong with Ted Cruz, but he's only... People for, that, that are really right wing, very you know, the evangelicals and the very conservatives are the ones that's going to vote for him. You're not going to have independents and Democrats vote for Cruz. Trump, yes, but Cruz, no. It's just common sense. I mean, what's you're a thousand percent right. But what I'm trying to get across to those people is that after the primaries, if Trump wins, they're still not going to vote for him because he's not evangelical enough. Oh no, he will. I asked him that already. I said, so what? Are you going to vote for Hillary if he, if, if, if Trump comes out? He says, uh. Oh no, I'm not. Of course not. All right, all right. So he's not that crazy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but <laughs> all right. Well, that, so in other words, he knows if there's a candidate that's a Republican versus her, he's going to go for that candidate. I got it. Well, that's very good news, I think. Yeah, definitely. definitely. All right, I'm going to send you a, a great conservative book called Government Zero. Maybe you can wave it around the living room, give a copy to your uh, father-in-law. I'm sure you'll find so much in there that he doesn't know. And I thank you for listening to the uh to the program. It's uh, what day of the week? Thursday already. Blizzard warning issued for D.C. Blizzard warning. Blizzard, blizzard. Can you imagine that we're having a blizzard in January in the east on the East Coast? How is that even possible? It must be that darn global warming stuff. Here in California, lakes have risen like 30 feet in a week. And the local newspaper won't publish the picture of the lake's uh, water level going up. They run an article, Lake Blank has gone up 30 feet in a week, but they show pictures of it when it was in the drought. That's in Jerry Brown's backyard. You talk about brainwashing. How about showing us one picture of the lake, the new level of the lake, like after all the storms we've had? It just shows you the brainwashing that you have to overcome in this world to know, you know, how to make heads or tails out of anything. Honest to God. And it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show. I need to stay grounded. I can read the blogs, I can read the articles, I can read the sites day and night. Do I know reality by reading all the, uh, the Internet? Let me ask you something. Do you think that that's reality? The stories from newspapers, websites, uh, and, and radio shows for that matter. Is that reality? Is that the only reality that you use? Then you're in real trouble. It is a part of reality, but it's a biased reality. I myself, being in the business of... Speaking to so many people every day, I try to stay grounded. And the, the ways I do it are very basic. I talk to a fisherman. I talk to a gardener. And I try to understand the reality through their eyes. Does that help me project it out to the world? I don't know. But I don't know. I grew up that way. I grew up that way with ordinary people. 
And sometimes one person's opinion means nothing, 